hey there, good morning, welcome back, y'all know who I am, uh, feeling a little tired, worn down, and a bit demoralized this morning, share a cup of coffee with you, tell you a little bit about why, this morning I woke up to see Tim's video on Two people who were stabbed in Portland a bit back were murdered by a man who was in jail a week prior and released on his own recognizance. Or his charges dropped, whatever. He was turned back out on the street. A man that was killed in Portland last week, or earlier this week, his murderer was in jail, and they let him go. Ted Wheeler and his DA, or DA up there have been turning folks loose left and right and they're getting bolder and bolder feeling like there's no punishment gonna get them. So they're now out there committing murders. That's pretty sad and disgusting Mr. Wheeler that you're letting your citizens die for a political statement. I know you're terrified, you're up for re-election, but guess what, son, that ain't happening. Over here on the sane side of things, we're feeling pretty confident, and everything we see says more and more and more people are coming over here to join our cadre. Uh, I got these articles on voter fraud. I'm sure you guys have all heard about that stuff. And uh, I'm not going to go through them really here just to show you that they exist. You can go look them up for yourselves. And if you think the Democrats are not going to cheat seven ways from Sunday, try and steal back control, authority, money, all of it, you're wrong. And if you don't think that they're willing to let people die or let people be killed, incite people to commit murder, you're wrong. And if you don't think that they'll turn a blind eye and turn these aspiring murderers back out on the street, give them a second chance, you're wrong. And if you don't think these Democrat politicians wouldn't turn these people towards your business, or let them just happenstance find it randomly for plausible deniability, you're wrong. If you don't think that there is nothing beneath the Democrats in their effort to get back what they lost, you're wrong. They've made that abundantly clear. They've done nothing since Donald Trump was elected besides start throwing a temper tantrum, turn it into a riot, and now it's a murder spree. Since they used George Floyd's overdose and death as an excuse to commit riots, murders, burnings, lootings, etc., how many people coast to coast have died now? Just had a guy from Patriot Prayer get shot dead in the streets in cold blood. What do you think happens after that? So Donald Trump, fortunately, thankfully, has done the one thing I think he can do at the moment uh, in the wake of this situation. 
which is to have the feds deputize the state police. Now Trump didn't shove a bunch of feds into the state or the city. The cops were already here. He just federally deputized them so that they could arrest people for federal crime. Nespa? That's the same Johnny Law that always was here. And there's not more cops necessarily. They're just given broader jurisdiction outside of the city where the police won't do their job. Well, let me rephrase that. <sighs> the police couldn't do their job, and now they're abstaining from doing their job because there's no point to putting themselves in jeopardy and in harm's way so that the same criminal they saw yesterday they can see today. Where does all this go? This goes to where it is now and the problem gets stopped, one hopes. Do the state police in Oregon do the job that the federal government is hoping that they will do? Or do they decide that it's too far gone and it's not worth their issue and they don't care? State cops here tend to be pretty determined to do their job because they're usually the ones who have to clean up the kind of shit that we're seeing in Portland. Because they see it on the freeways, the speeders, the trafficking, the crazy drug runners and all that shit. They see the crashes, they see the wild stuff. So, they tend to be a little more determined about upholding the law and not having to clean your dead ass up off the freeway. So one can hope. If this stopgap doesn't work, next is likely the Insurrection Act or something else, I don't know. I don't know what tools the president has at his disposal. I've never been the president. I've studied a bit about what they do, but I don't know exactly what all they can or can't do. i got some ideas, but I'm sure that there are wild and crazy random clauses written into the law over the last several hundred years that may or may not should still be there. Maybe some of them are obsolete, others of them are far-reaching, many of them just shit all over the Constitution on their face, so, so they shouldn't be there in the first place. I think that's written down somewhere. Uh... So what happens next? What happens next is one or both sides become more determined in the face of the lack of police security and safety in their citizenry and their, in their cities, their society. What happens next is either the government puts a stop to this or the citizenry turn this into a three ring circus of a shit show. You think 30, 40 people being killed is going to be looking bad. So if this is allowed to go there, I expect there's no stopping that train. Once the train America gets on that specific track, where the police force, regardless of what their jurisdiction is incapable or unwilling of handling, unwilling to be handling the issue, and the citizenry are aware that at any point in time they may be walking down the street and be identified and murdered in an effect to silence the, uh, the rest of their, their compatriots. Uh... You will see huntings, and I do mean huntings. You will see vehicles of people intent on driving up and pulling drive-by murders on both sides of the fence. And that's going to get bad for a minute. And somewhere in there... Somebody's going to try something stupid.
we've seen a few times when people have attempted to rush or crash the gates of a place where POTUS is. Not long ago, he was informed about somebody who decided to commit suicide by stupid. And Donald left the room and came back and said something like, do I look shaken? You know, or do I look scared or whatever? No, brother, you don't. You got the best trigger men in the business working for you. Of course you don't. Uh, but these idiots don't know that. And you're not the only high-seated individual on this chessboard. I don't want to see that happen. Once that happens, America will officially be third world nation status again. And the real civil war everybody's talking about will start to kick off. And then heaven help us the fuck all. Because the deep state and the Democrats and the news media have made damn well sure this is brother against brother, sister against mother, friend on friend arguments, agitations, and hostilities. Thanks for that. Tell me you don't know somebody who's on the other side of the political aisle from you. And tell me sometimes you haven't just a little bit questioned whether or not they would do something crazy, stupid, or insane. Maybe not to you. I got a friend, lives in Pennsylvania. I don't worry about him. He is pretty f left, in my opinion, but A, we're still friends, so that's a good start. B, he doesn't like this crazy and violence any more than I do. He just thinks it's Trump's fault. I think he's crazy and a little bit led by the nose, listening to the wrong people. Sometimes we argue, sometimes we don't talk for days, doesn't matter. I don't talk to a lot of people anyway. My point being, I worry about the people around him. He says he lives in a crazy fucking place. Now, he thinks all the people around him are crazy because they are like closet Trump supporters, etc., etc., etc. I think the people around him are crazy because they're not closet Trump supporters. They're either open Trump supporters and they're pissed off, scared, and tired. Or they're just like him with no, like, logic fence. They're just everywhere, scattered, like a fucking herd of ducks. I'm not going to be keeping them together for long, are you? So, people aren't seeing eye to eye, and some people are coming crash into reality you know I love to, to use Tim Pool as, as, as an example because he uses himself as an example he said at the beginning of the year he was adamant no guns in the house and then he says the riots started and I seem to recall the riots started and that got his attention but what got him to owning guns was a lady reporter had people go to her house and threaten and harass her. So it, it hit home because Tim's in the news business, she's in the news business, they're threatening and harassing reporters like Tucker Carlson and now this girl, I forget her name. That's when he got guns. Not because people were going insane. He didn't get guns because of the riots. He didn't get guns because of whatever. He got guns because people in his line of work were being targeted. Beside the point, my point being that he shifted quite a bit degree on that space. 
few years ago, maybe even uh, a year ago, he's going, yeah, no, I can't vote for Trump. I think the man's an asshole. He says the wrong things. He does the wrong things. I don't like him. Well, somewhere along the road, someone started pointing out what Donald actually does do, and Tim's going, hey, I, I, I like that. I like this. I like those things. What the hell? How come I like what Donald Trump is doing? Well, Tim, you were lied to. Your whole fucking life you were lied to, bro. Welcome over here to the sane side. I used to say the conservative side, but you're here now, so. <laughs> Welcome to the sane side. Uh, people like him are moving over and making these decisions because they're coming face to face. Like I said, Tim got guns when reporters were being threatened. When you come crashing into the idea that some states you're still allowed to work, other states, they close you down and shut your business down and try to arrest you if you reopen for no good reason. Some states, you're allowed to come and go freely. Other states, you're not even allowed to go windsurfing in the middle of the ocean if you're a coastal state. By yourself, they arrested that guy. More and more people see the voter fraud issues. They see the constant orange man bad, the constant lies. They see millions and millions of dollars wasted attacking Donald Trump in the legal system. Days and days and days of, of effective political gerrymandering. Constantly hampering any positive motion that could be moving forward for the American people. Plug in their frickin' pork barrel politics into much needed uh, legislation to help the people through what's going on right now. Every single day, it's orange man bad. Look at what we did. We're so good and virtuous. Vote for us because orange man bad. Lie about stuff, cover stuff up, cheat, steal, manipulate, all the dirty underhanded politics. Pretend to apologize when you get caught. Haven't you realized it's so blatantly obvious half of us are bored with your antics? The reason we know you're going to cheat and voter fraud in the election is because we see the signs. You keep going on about it. You keep bringing it up. You keep playing both sides of the fence about voting by mail, etc., etc., etc. You keep pressing COVID so you can keep pressing vote by mail so that you can have the opportunity to cheat and use voter fraud to fuck the election up. You keep pressing COVID bullshit and the scary crap. It's not Republican cities and states that by and large that are keeping things locked down and harassing the people. Kate Brown recently said that she's going to push the COVID lockdown through November. Nine months, Kate? Nine months to flatten the curve, huh? No. I'm done. I don't care. Fuck all of you Democrat shitbags. If you can't arrest murderers, you can lick my asshole about your COVID lockdown. You get me? You're turning murderers loose on the street to go kill and maim and rape again. You got fuckers in New York raping people in broad daylight on the platform at the goddamn subway. I don't care what your COVID mandate says. Shove it up your ass. You Democrats have lost. And when you cheat the election, if you push hard at it, I suspect you just may find people out there are come to the end of their rope. And if they're going to be in this predicament and situation, then I bet you they're going to feel like you deserve to be right there with them. Now think about this. How many people have already committed suicide over COVID lockdown alone? Stop with the shits. Fuck off now. Get your act together. Get your asses in line. 
You've lost the election, and we all know it. You know it, too, and you're freaking the fuck out. I don't give a goddamn how much money you owe to very bad people and if they fucking hang you from a closet because of it. That's your bed to lay in. Stop torturing and killing American citizens. You're done. We fucking quit, and we've had it. Now you stop before some madman goes and does something crazy and stupid. I don't want to be around for that news story, and I certainly don't want to read it to the fucking people. Now, this is where I beg Donald Trump for that Gestapo you all accuse him of. Mr. President, please get rid of these asshat politicians who are murdering people in the streets through negligence. And would you please take these criminals off the streets? Remember those hospital ships we didn't use? Remember those hospital ships, one on each coast? Room for thousands of fucking people who were sick with COVID? Seems all treated well to, to manage the sickness, right? It's an environment where you can host a lot of people and manage and quarantine them. What would it take to turn it into a prison? Round up all these riotous Antifa BLM shitbags and their Democrat compatriots and put them on that boat. Lock it up and take it four miles off coast and park it there to be a prison. Can we do that before more people die? Can we do that before people take war back to these goddamn asshole riotous fucking mobs? Can we do that before some crazy nutter does something the world will regret? Can we do something? <laughs>